The Statue of Liberty is one of the most recognizable structures in the USA and in the world. In 1886, the monument wasn't just symbolic. For 16 years, the statue functioned as a fully operational lighthouse. Tourists at the U.S. landmark can head to her crown for a stunning view of the city. But there used to be a perch in the torch that could be accessed. Sadly, the ladder to the torch room was damaged, making the room inaccessible from 1916 until today. And it hasn't welcomed any visitors since. The weight of the statue can be compared to the weight of an empty Boeing 737. But this is only the outer skin of the statue. The metal construction inside, that is stairs, pylons, and support, weigh another 125 tons. It's like a small train locomotive. And the concrete base underneath weighs an impressive 27,000 tons. That's like a fleet of 11,000 heavy SUVs or 180 of the largest blue whales. And this is what the statue looked like 135 years ago. Yes, its color is very different. It's the same color you'd see if you cut through an electrical wire, because the entire statue is made of copper. About 20 years after it was installed, it turned completely green. That's because the air and the frequent rains gradually oxidize the metal. And that metal is extremely thin. Designers could have made those sheets of metal thicker, but then the statue would have been even heavier and it would have fallen under its own weight. A little thinner, and the severe oxidation and corrosion of the metal would have made holes in the statue. The sculptor had thought well about the construction of the statue, and it took more than 10 years to build it. The constructors needed absolutely all the parts of the statue made of plaster first. Here's the head. They took sheets of wood parallel to each other and pushed them against the model. The edges of the sheets were then shaped so that they perfectly replicated the shapes and curves of the statue. In other words, it was a cast. Then, the wooden structure was placed on the floor and covered with a sheet of copper. All that was left was to shape the sheet of copper into the curves of the statue with hammers and a press. The sheets were then reinforced on the inside with iron straps. This procedure was repeated 350 times. That's how many separate sheets of copper make up the Statue of Liberty. But if you put it all together, it would simply collapse under its own weight or be blown away by the wind. And that's where Gustave Eiffel comes in. Yes, this is the French engineer who later built the most famous metal structure in the world, the Eiffel Tower. Gustave Eiffel designed the iron pylon that would serve as the spine of the statue. And then smaller metal structures were added around it. Later, all 350 copper plates of the Statue of Liberty would be attached to it. And here you can already see the shape of the future statue. The metal structures repeat the shape of the torch, head, and the tablet in the left hand. Even though this metal structure weighs over 100 tons, it's still quite flexible. So even now, the fully assembled Statue of Liberty sways a bit. In a strong wind, it can swing 4 inches at the top. Édouard de Laboulaye was a huge supporter of Bertaldi's work and encouraged the French people to raise money for the statue. Meanwhile, the American public crowdfunded the money to pay for the pedestal. Bartoldi completed the iconic torch-bearing arm of Lady Liberty years before finishing the rest of the design. The arm was then donated in Madison Square Park to encourage the public to donate to the statue. Fundraising from the American public proved to be difficult until publisher Joseph Pulitzer stepped in. He started a drive for donations and promised that each contributor would receive an honorary shout-out in his famous newspaper, The New York World. This attracted over 120,000 donations and raised enough funds to complete the statue. It took about 10 years to finish the work. It took workers another four months to fully assemble the statue on the finished pedestal. The statue is connected to the pedestal, so it can't be lifted separately. And the entire metal structure inside can be seen through the glass ceiling of the pedestal. Although interior work was still in progress, you could already see the statue in all its beauty. There's a star-shaped base on the ground. It's the remains of the former Fort Wood on the island. Next comes the granite pedestal, which has its own observation deck, and the statue itself. Now, let's look inside the structure and try to get to the top. The seven spikes on the Statue of Liberty are not there to represent the seven continents and seven seas, as some previously thought. The spikes stand for sun rays, while the circle is there as some halo. It's like when immigrants arrive on a boat. The statue greets them with hello and welcome. 
There's also an elevator, but it holds a maximum of three people and is only used in emergencies. As you climb, you can see exactly how the copper sheets were attached to the metal frame. And you can also distinguish specific details of the statue, like the folds of the dress and even locks of hair. So, 354 steps done, congratulations! You've reached the observation deck in the crown of the Statue of Liberty. It's pretty small and only fits a couple of people. You can look out over the New York Harbor through 25 glass windows. They symbolize the gems of our planet. And there are powerful lanterns behind you that light up the glass. They turn on at night so that passing ships can see the statue's crown glow. Well, actually, entry to the torch is not allowed for tourists. But just for you, we'll open it up for a minute. To get up there, you have to go down. Yes, about to the neck of the statue. There's a hatch that leads through a narrow passage into the right arm of the statue. Then you have to go up the stairs to the wrist. Then another ladder will lead you to the handle of the torch. Open the cylindrical door and whoopee! You're on the highest observation deck of the Statue of Liberty. For many years now, only workers have been allowed access here. There's gold in the metal the torch is made of. But if you look closely at it, you'll see that it's not the original torch that was brought here from France. About 100 years after the statue was installed, in 1986, frequent rains and leaking water damaged the torch, and it had to be replaced. At first, the old torch was displayed as a museum piece just inside the pedestal at the entrance. But recently, a new museum was built on the island and the torch was moved there. A theory suggests that Lady Liberty might not even be a lady at all. Author and the Statue of Liberty scholar Elizabeth Mitchell believes that Bartholdi did model Lady Liberty's face after a family member, but not his mother. Upon studying the statue's face, Elizabeth noted that Charlotte Bartholdi had a slightly different face structure than Lady Liberty. In the early years of his career, Bartholdi was a bust maker, known for his accuracy, so these slight discrepancies didn't make sense. When Elizabeth came across pictures of Bartholdi's brother, Jean Charles, she noticed that his face bore a striking resemblance to Lady Liberty. The statue and pedestal together cost $500,000 to build. In today's money, that would be over $10 million. The statue was completed in France and then shipped to America, split into over 300 copper pieces, packed in wooden boxes. Over 200,000 Americans waited to greet the ship carrying Lady Liberty as it arrived in New York Harbor. The statue was assembled on Bedloe's Island, which is now known as Liberty Island. A mistake might have been made when the Statue of Liberty was assembled. During an inspection in 1982, workers realized that her head had been installed two feet off-center. I have had such a crick in my neck. No wonder I've had this headache all these years. The famous structure is also weatherproof. Lady Liberty is struck by around 600 bolts of lightning every year since she was built. Some photographers have been lucky enough to catch these moments. She's also survived hurricanes, ocean changes, and countless storms. The Statue of Liberty was designed to sway in the wind. During heavy winds, Lady Liberty can sway up to 3 inches in any direction, and her torch can sway 5. 